Okay, now speaking of blood thinners, let's talk about heparin and warfarin and everything that thins out the blood. So again, drugs that thin out the blood, this leads to increased bleeding, which is going to kill or harm the client. So we have three categories that you should be familiar with. So let's break it down. Antiplatelets include aspirin and clopidogrel. Anticoagulants are heparin, anoxaparin, and even warfarin. And those thrombolytics, the clot busters, are TPA and those ending in ACE, like streptokinase and altipase. Now make it really simple. If the name has a P in it, then just be careful for the P for platelets. It can lower the platelets and lead to increased risk for bleeding. So break it down. Aspirin, it has a P, right? So it lowers platelets. Clopidogrel lowers platelets. Heparin lowers platelets. How about warfarin? Well, there's no P. What about anoxaparin? Yes, anoxaparin lowers the platelets. So the big question here, what platelet level would you hold the drug and notify the healthcare provider? Well, write this down. Any platelet less than 150,000. That's why we say platelets less than 150 is very risky. I once had a client come in complaining of a bleeding in the gums. And I thought, guy, you're in the wrong place. You probably need a dentist. I was thinking it was like gingivitis or something. But after reviewing the labs, I had a better picture of what really was going on. The client's warfarin levels were really high. He hadn't been going for his monthly finger sticks. You see, clients with warfarin and even heparin or any long-term blood thinner, they need frequent blood draws to assess therapeutic range. Most commonly on boards, you're going to see long-term warfarin therapy. So let's talk about it. Heparin and warfarin are famous anticoagulants here. If you go into the NCLEX without knowing these two drugs, I can almost guarantee that you're going to fail boards here. Now why? Why do I say that? because these two drugs are the most common in the clinical setting. You must know how to conduct client safety for the two common drugs here. Now, as you know, these two blood thinners prevent clots, right? Well, which one acts faster and which acts slower? Well, again, let the name help you here. Think heparin acts in a hurry and warfarin has a weaker start. So in this case, both are started at the same time for a client in the clinical setting to prevent the risk for clots, right? Say we have a client after a knee surgery where blood flow is naturally diminished from all that swelling inside the knee. And now the client is on their bed and they have a big risk for a DVT, that blood clot in the leg. So in this case, both are started at the same time because heparin acts in a hurry and warfarin has the weaker start. Now, which one comes in pill form? That's warfarin. And which one comes in injection form? Well, that's heparin and even anoxaparin, the lower molecular weight heparin. Now, boards is not going to ask you about that. They expect you to know it. But what boards will ask you about is therapeutic ranges. So which one has PTT and which one has INR? Well, simply let the name help you. Which one has the P name? Well, it's not warparin. <laughs> it's heparin, right? So look for the P's. Heparin has P, so think PTT. The key number to know for INR on warfarin therapy is two to three. So INR for everyone on warfarin therapy is gonna be two to three, except those with mechanical heart valves. That one is 2.5 to 3.5. Now you must know these key numbers for boards and even the antidotes too. So to make it simple, for antidotes, just think of the simple memory trick here. Think hepat like a frog because heparin acts in a hurry like a frog's in a hurry. So the P is for PTT, 46 to 70, and P for protamine sulfate, the antidote. Now warfarin, think warkin because it takes so long to kick in, you wonder if it's going to be warkin. W is for warfarin, K in warkin is for vitamin K, the antidote, and warkin, the INR, 2 to 3 range. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right guys, see you next time.